Okay, so at the end of the last video, I gave you this point P, and I challenged you to try to find the distance to each of the three coordinate planes, and then to each of the three coordinate axes. Okay, now I've drawn the point up here. So from the origin, I went back to left three and up five. So here's my point P. I'm going to use that picture in a moment to calculate these distances. Before we do that, I'm going to take a look at this picture of this lovely mouse and this piece of cheese so that we can talk a little bit about how distance is defined. When I talk about the distance between two objects, by definition it's always the shortest distance between a point on the first object and a point on the second object. So, okay, I could say here's a point on the mouse and here's a point on the piece of cheese and here's a path connecting them. And I could measure the distance of that path, and I think we'd all be insane to think that that was the distance between the mouse and the piece of cheese. <laughs> now, it seems a little more reasonable to draw in a straight line, but even the length of this line would not be the distance between the mouse and the piece of cheese, because I need to choose the closest points. So I'm thinking that's maybe the end of this whisker and this piece right here on the cheese. This distance would be the distance between the mouse and the piece of cheese. Okay. So, when I'm talking about the distance from a point to a plane, obviously there are infinitely many points on the plane. What I have to do is figure out what is the point on the plane that's closest to the point P. Okay. Now, if I'm talking about the XY plane, that would be below that point. Let me illustrate that here in three space. So we've come back to left three and up five. If I want to get to the xy plane, the fastest way there is just to go straight down to hit the point that's directly below it, which we said was the projection of P onto the xy plane. If I come forward or back or left or right, that's additional distance that I don't need to travel my goal is to get to the xy plane, the direction I need to go is down. So I'm going to measure the distance to this point, negative 2, negative 3, 0, the projection of that point onto the xy plane, which is the point that's directly below it. And then I can actually evaluate that by inspection, because if I came straight down, I can see I came down a distance of 5. So the distance to the xy plane would be 5. <laughs> To the XZ plane, well, the XZ plane is this plane right here. If here's my point to get to the XZ plane, I want to go straight to the right. So the projection onto the XZ plane would have the same X and Z value, but the Y value would be 0. So I'd be looking at the distance between this point and negative 2, 0, 5. And I can see by inspection, I'm coming to the right a distance of 3. So notice what I'm getting is not just the y value of that point, but that's all I need to know to calculate this distance. I'm getting the absolute value of that y value. Similarly, if I want to get the distance to the yz plane, well, I'm 2 back. I'm going to have to come 2 forward. So that distance would be the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. Okay. Excellent. Now, if I want to get the distance to one of the axes, again, I can try to figure that out if I can find the point on, let's say, the x-axis that's closest to here. Now, if I'm here, I know I've come two back. I've come three to the left and five up. To get to the x-axis, I'm going to have to go to the right and I'm going to have to go down. But I don't have to go forward or back at all. The point on the x-axis that's going to be closest to this point is going to be the point 0, I'm sorry, is going to be the point negative 2, 0, 0. If I'm on the x-axis, I'm not to the left or right of it, so the y value has to be 0. I'm not above or below it, so the z value has to be 0. Those have to change but I don't have to change the x value. 
essentially what I can do is I can say let's work in the plane x equals negative 2. That's the plane that's two units behind the yz plane. Okay. Now, I can label the axes. The axes in this plane would be the line parallel to the y-axis and parallel to the z-axis. They're not actually the y and z axis because they're these parallel lines that I would have right here that pass through the point negative 2, 0, 0. Okay. But I can label them as parallel to y and parallel to z. And then, essentially, all of these points have an x value of negative 2. So I don't need to bother labeling that. But I can say, oh, the y value is negative 3 and the z value is 5. And then at this point, which is the center of that plane, x and y are 0. That's the origin in the plane x equals negative 2. Okay. So I'm looking for this distance, and that's just a question of Pythagoras. This side is 3, this side is 5. This is going to be the square root of 5 squared plus 3 squared. That's the square root of 25 plus 9, which is the square root of 34. Okay. Similar for the other problem. Go ahead and pause the video, just work out these distances if you hadn't already done that, and then tune back in and double check your work with me. Welcome back. Okay, so to find the distance to the y-axis, I'm going to basically be looking in the plane y equals negative 3, which is parallel to the x-z plane. Okay. The point on the y-axis that's closest to p is going to be the point that has that same y value of negative 3, but where the x and z values are 0. In the plane, it looks like the origin, although of course in 3 space, it's actually this point right here on the y-axis. Okay. And then x is negative 2 and z is 5. So we're looking for this distance. Again, that's just Pythagoras. That's going to be the square root of 25 plus 4. That's the square root of 29. And to get to the z-axis, I would look in the plane z equals 5. That's going to be the plane that's parallel to the xy plane, just hovering 5 units above it. Okay. All right. The point P has an x value of negative 2 and a y value of negative 3. So in this plane, I would denote that as just negative 2, negative 3. By virtue of being in the plane, automatically the z value is 5. The point that would be on the z axis would have an x value and a y value of 0. So we're looking for this distance. And again, that's just Pythagoras. So that's going to be the square root of 4 plus 9, which is the square root of 13. All right. Now, these are very special planes and special lines because we can tell just by inspection what's the point on that plane or on that line that's closest to the point P. And that's just because these planes have very simple equations. This is z equals 0, this is y equals 0, this is x equals 0. These have very easy descriptions as well. If we're on the x-axis, y and z are both 0, because we haven't gone left or right, and we haven't gone up or down. Okay. And so because of that, we can see by inspection what the closest point is, and then we can calculate very quickly, sometimes by inspection, sometimes by a very quick calculation, what that distance is. By the end of the semester, actually by the end of this chapter, we'll be able to find the distance from a point to an arbitrary line or an arbitrary plane. But that's going to require a little bit more doing. We're not quite ready for that yet.